Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Steven Like a Gamer. I know it's been a while, right? Man, this video, I'm going to try not to make it really long because i got a lot of stuff I'm trying to talk about in a short amount of time. But just right off the bat, uh, with my work schedule, September, October, November, early November, late September, all of October is just slam-packed with uh, work stuff for me. So when, that, when this time of year comes around, my channel, like, always slows down because I just never have time to make any videos uh, to get out there. I've been playing games and I've been wanting to do game discussions on the games I've been beating like I normally do, but I just have not had time to do that. And just with work and everything, I said, you know what, I figured right now, I'm about to have a vacation in October this year, so I get to miss a lot of the hectic activity going around with working all the overtime that we have to do. And in that time, I'm going to plan on playing a lot of games and hopefully beating a couple to do some game discussions on. But uh, I figured instead of doing four, five, I don't know how many games, but five game discussion videos, I'm going to go ahead and just do a games I have beaten uh, here, which is five games. I'm going to briefly touch on them. Some really do deserve their own video, but I just really don't have the time to do it. I just got home from work now. I'm still in my underclothes from work. And I'm all sweaty and nasty, but I just really want to get a video out there. And like, you know, I'm still here, guys. But i um, also going to go ahead and just show up just a couple pickups that happened to get uh, during the past month or so while I've been uh, going out and getting things. It's not a lot, so I'm going to do it all in one video. Hopefully this won't be too long. Like I said, I apologize if it is, but I, I just really am slam packed with work and stuff. When that vacation comes, whew, I cannot wait to take a break. But anyways, I'll get things started here. Like I said, even though I haven't done a game, did a game discussion in a while since Killer is Dead, I've actually beaten a, well, one, two, three, I've beaten five games. So I'm going to go ahead and just talk briefly on each one real quick uh, in the order that I've beaten them in. And to start off with, the next game that I beat after Killer is Dead was Journey. I went and got this collector's edition for PS3 because it was, I think, the last copy they had at a Target here and it was on sale for 20, uh, not 20, but $10. So I went ahead and got it. Man, what? I wish I would have played this right when it first came out, but it's to hold off this song, and it's an experience that's tough to explain. It's, it's just a platforming adventure game, if you really want to call it platforming. I don't know how, very light platforming, but it's just you going through this incredible journey through this amazing Amazing, 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 <laughs> I did it twice in a row, I'm leaving that in there, and this amazing visual art style that the guys did here, it's, it's just a beautiful game, I've already beaten it three times, and I had planned on playing it again this week, or, well, actually last week, to unlock an achievement in it that says you have to take a break from the game, or trophy, sorry, in order to uh, unlock the trophy, you got to take a break and come back from it, but, man, this game, it's just something special from collecting the white, uh, I don't even know what they call it now, these white orbs in the game to make your scarf longer, running into people whose outfit is different, signaling how many times they've beaten the game. I've actually collected every orb in the game, so I have the white outfit, which lets me, white robe, which lets me pretty much fly without having to collect um, anything to energize my scarf and stuff, so... But anyway, it's, just, it's tough to explain the game, and you just have to experience it for yourself. You're just going on this journey, either by, by your own, or it wants you to play through with someone else. And you co-op this game together, uh, you don't talk, all you have is a chirp to communicate with, there's no headsets, you don't even know who you're playing with till you beat it, which is what I really love. I love uh, seeing who I played the game with and sending them a message afterwards saying it was good, or most of the time when I'm playing co-op, the three times that I played, First time, I just did it single player because I didn't want no one to slow me down. The other two times, I tried to do it co-op, and everyone would leave right before the end. And I wanted to finish the game with someone, and I've yet to been able to finish the game with someone. But I loved it. This is when it got Game of the Year and everything, the year it came out, it hands down deserved it. it man, I didn't think it was as good as people hyped it up to be, but it was great. And see, I've already talked too much on that one if I want this to be short. But everyone knows what Journey is, but I just loved it. I just thought it was amazing. Alright, the next one I beat, uh, which that was a pickup as well, so I'm kind of knocking these out at the same time. The next one I played was a digital game. Amnesia, A Machine for Pigs. Now, I was a big fan of the first Amnesia, 
So I was like, super excited with uh, Amnesia Machine for Pigs. Didn't know what to expect though, because I looked up nothing on this game. I did not want it to be spoiled. And I went into it, uh, and have to say I'm a little disappointed with the game. It was developed by the same developers who did uh, Dear Esther. Uh, Chinese, the Chinese Room, I, I forget their name. But I think it was made by the same guys who did that, not the original team who did the first Amnesia. And you can kind of tell that they kind of that it was their type of game that they made. Because Dear Esther is all a story-driven game. That's pretty much what it is. Uh, the first Amnesia, yeah, was a great story to it, but also had some puzzles and uh, a gameplay fact, a hide and seek gameplay factor to it. It had the uh, like the sphere effect that if if you're if you're starting to get too scared, the screen shakes and you start biting your fingernails, and it it, it has so much to the first one. And this second one, Machine for Pigs, has nothing like that. It's pretty much in the first one you had to find oil for lanterns and stuff like that. You don't have to do that in this one. Amnesia M Machine for Pigs is pretty much a story-driven game. And the fact that the main character, you wake up, again, you don't remember anything. And all you're trying to do is find your sons. And it's your journey trying to find your sons. And you're uncovering your surroundings about you uh, through mainly letters that are left around that you're trying to piece together and through phone calls you get from a certain individual. Now, that doesn't mean that the story in this game was not gr This story in this game is pretty gritty, and it's it's real brutal. So it's if that's the type of fear kind of factor you like, then that's all cool and fine. Um, it, the game was not scary at all. It didn't scare me none whatsoever. Uh, so it's... I don't know, it didn't have that touch, but if you're into like a gritty story that kind of scares you and bothers you, then this one will do it, because it is kind of a gruesome little story that they got going on. And that's what kept me interested, and the surroundings around me were really cool. Uh, the environment you're in, dark and atmospheric, but the story is what drives the game, and if the story wasn't good, the game wouldn't be good at all, but luckily the story is good, so I would suggest uh, if you're a fan of the first one, Give this one a look. Maybe if you want to wait for it to get cheaper on a Steam sale or something, maybe wait for that. Uh, I got it at the pre-order price, uh, 15 I thought it was worth it and justified, so really liked it uh, as far as the story-wise. But wish there was more in the gameplay there. All right, next, again, I've been playing a lot and did pick up Diablo 3. Uh, my buddy Chance and Sprague Spacebar, they were all picking this game up, so I was like, I was holding off because I have it on PC, but... After playing it on a controller, I can't go back to PC playing it. I know PC purists are probably going to kill me for that, but it's it plays so good on a controller. That's what I like to play my games with. It's what I prefer, and they just nailed it with this game. Uh, Story-wise, I couldn't really tell you what's there, but uh, I paid attention to what's going on, but uh, try to explain it. Yeah. Wikipedia or something can do it better, not me. <laughs> But this is just a loot fest game where you're going through, finding the best loot you can, completing the story, and starting all over again on a harder difficulty. And that's what I'm doing right now. So it's just, I'm playing as a monk, I'm having a blast with it. Haven't touched it in about a week now because I'm trying to play through more games, as you'll see. But uh, really, really fun. Glad to pick it up. I got to play with Chance for a few minutes. We didn't play a lot. But uh, hopefully we'll all get together and be able to knock out some. Maybe when we all get 60, it'll just be easier to play together. I had a blast with that. All right, the next thing I played, the la or the last two, are digital games only. Uh, Saints Row the Third. This came part of a Deep Silver pet Humble Bundle pack months ago that I bought. I think I paid five bucks, and this was part of the pack. And I did not think everyone's talking about Grand Theft Auto V, and I do want to get that game and play it because it does look like fun. But I can wait till that gets cheaper. Well, we're back. You may notice it's nighttime, no longer daytime. I'm no longer stinky and dirty. I have a fresh shower. Uh, no, what had happened was, went to go edit the video here just uh, about 20 minutes, 30 minutes ago, and noticed that the audio from the point where I cut the video off from here was completely ruined. So without trying to redo the video, I'm going to pick up right here and get started again because like I said, time is limited. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up where I left off, which I think was with... What was it? Oh yeah, Saints Row the Third. Saints Row the Third. Like I was saying, I know a lot of people are playing GTA V right now. And I did plan on getting that one, just when it got cheaper. But, 
Saints Row the Third. See, my history with Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, San Andreas, played 4, didn't like it. Vice City is my favorite one, hands down. I just love the 80s vibe and feel. Saints Row, I've never played a Saints Row game before. Saints Row the Third was amazing. As far as open world games that are kind of like that, it is just flat out fun. It is just trying to have fun, have a good time. It pokes fun of itself, other games in the genre, and just it's just an all out blast. The dialogue in it, the voice acting is perfect. The missions you do in the game are awesome. It's just a free open world for you to just cause chaos and it it's just awesome. And one thing that's turning me off Grand Theft Auto V is the fact that you're a bad guy doing bad things and it's not like you're in the end trying to be a hero or something or to some sort of extent at least it's what I've heard about it and all the Grand Theft Auto games it's kind of opposite you might be a bad guy but you're kind of doing some good things once in a while uh, you're not always trying to do the bad thing if this game Saints Row the Third it fits the same mold as the old Grand Theft Autos and stuff but if it was mixed with a Vice City vibe I think it would hands down be my favorite type of open world game like that over Vice City because it just it's perfect. The one downfall I'd say with the game is the soundtrack of uh, the radio stations in the game just to the cars and stuff. It, it's not too good the soundtrack. So I wish there was a way. I was playing on PS3. Like why can't I access my own audio? Like plug in my MP3 player or something and listen to my own music. Well I wasn't playing on PS3, so I was playing on PC. I don't know why I said PS3. Playing on PC, and you think out of anything, you'd probably do that. Now, there might be a mod or something that lets you do it, but uh, I would think you'd be able to access your own music in these games by now and just play your own radio stations. Grand Theft Auto does a good job of putting good music in it, but the Saints Row Third game didn't have too much good music in it, but I loved it. Like I said, I had a blast. I really want to get Saints Row the Fourth now, the fourth game, but I just want to wait for it to get cheaper. It'd be nice if I could get it in uh, for this year to kind of try to mix it in there with my top 10 of 2012 because I think out of all the games I've beaten I might have only beaten 13 or 14 new releases this year so it'd be cool to try to play but we'll see how pricing goes around Black Friday or something or maybe there's another good PC deal that'll come out on it but lastly the last game that I completed was Sacred Citadel now this is another game that came with the Deep Silver bundle that Saints Row the Third came in a while back that I bought and it's something I kind of pushed off, didn't even download. And then when I was looking for something to play quick the other day, uh, I saw that it only take uh, about four hours to five to beat. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to download and see what it's all about. And it's actually a really fun side-scrolling beat-em-up. It's uh, simplistic, but it's, it's really fun. Just a hack-and-slash old-school style beat-em-up game. And it carries the same sort of art style as, say, Team... Fortress vibe is what I was getting from it, just in a 2D side-scrolling, uh, well, 3D kind of looking, uh, side-scrolling type of format. Now, basically, you can pick from four classes in the game, your warriors, your mage, I think there's a shaman in the game, and like an archer. Uh, you pick through those three classes, each with their own kind of movesets and skills, and it's a loot game. You go through uh, each act, which has about six stages in it, always with a boss fight in the end, and there's four acts. Uh, getting new gear, new weapons, which is just simple with an armor and weapons for your hands. And that's about it. You can also equip rune stones, kind of, to give yourself a little bit extra boost in power. There's skill points you get when you level up to put in attack, defense, uh, dexterity, or there is another one, the magic power for your weapons, because sometimes they have spells on them. So, very simple, but a really fun beat-em-up, and it is co-op multiplayer if you can find someone online. I couldn't find anyone online to play with because it would be really fun to play through that game. And I know we just had a Dragon's Crown come out which was a pretty fun beat em up in its own right but it, it, it might sound bad but I kinda had more fun playing this one uh, even though that one looks way better. It's just I really like this uh, beat em up, a really simple one. So Sacred Citadel, I think it's from the same tree of there's some sacred games on Xbox and PC. It kind of follows into the same uh, storyline with those, or atmosphere, I want to say. So, if you're into that series, you might want to check out that side-scrolling game. But, those are all the games that I kind of beat uh, and wanted to do discussion videos on separate. But, you know, just with time uh, flying by and not being able to, then 
I hope this does good enough to just tell you about the games and what I've been playing and trying to keep up with. So hopefully when mid-November kind of creeps around, I can start getting into some discussion videos when I beat games. Like I said, October here, I'm going to try to do some more like scary survival horror type games. I'm playing through Fear 2 right now, which I'm having a blast with. Except I'm getting really dizzy and nauseous kind of with the game. And I'll explain that when I get into a discussion about it, if I could do one. Now, I want to play Dead Space 3, finish that off, and I started up System Shock 2 the other day, so we'll see what else I can find to play in, but right now I'll show you the rest of the few pickups I got there. There's one, two, three, like seven, eight games here. I'm going to show you real quick how some stuff I got. First and foremost, I want to give big shout-outs to RPG Swag Man. He got this for me, White Knight Chronicles Origins, because it does not have a North American lease. Uh, we did a trade where I'm going to be sending him a very special item, and uh, hopefully it'll get to him pretty soon. But he sent this to me, and I'm so glad that he sent it to me. I'll put a link to his channel in here if I can remember to do so. I've been bad at trying to remember that lately. But RPG Swag Man, I know you've heard of him. He's a great uh, YouTuber. We hope to get him on the podcast one day. So uh, hopefully we'll get that all worked out. So, But I'm a big, huge fan of uh, White Knight Chronicles. Haven't beat him, but I love the combat style to him. And I wanted to have this portable version just to check it out and see what the differences are. So glad to have that. And then I went to GameStop like two days ago, and they had a buy two, get one going on the PSP stuff, get one free. So I got Deadhead Fred, God of War, Chains of Olympus, and Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops. All three of those, and I think the Deadhead Fred one was for free. So the PSP pickings are getting kind of slim in my GameStop now, so it's, it's kind of sad because I really like getting PSP and collecting for that. So we'll see how it goes. Uh... Uh, for as far as collecting more for that, I've kind of gotten almost everything I've wanted for it. They also had, man, weeks back now, a buy two, get one free on pre-owned games. And most of the time I'll go for cheap stuff, buy bunches of it. But this time I was like, you know what, I want to take advantage of it. And I want to get three new releases that came out this year. And I went ahead and got three. Spent 60 bucks, a little bit over 60 I think, and got these three games. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, Metal Gear Solid Rising and the new Devil May Cry all came out this year and then I plan on having all these beat before the end of the year and hopefully Devil May Cry this could probably be an October game as well since it's it's got that Halloween kind of vibe so I might pop this in for an event for October as well I was playing Metal Gear Solid Rising and it's really fun but I might put it on the back burner just so I could get this finished for October but this is a short game I, I'll probably, I got a vacation coming up I'll probably knock all these out on the vacation and Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon might be a good one to try to play through for Halloween as well. All the ghosts and stuff. And the last two things here, again, while I was at GameStop two days ago, they had a bin. There was a buy three games for $10 sale going on. Now there's a buy two for $10 going on. And it's titles that are a little bit more, that are a little better than what was in there before. Even though they did have some good steals in that three for 10 bin. Dead Rising 2. And L.A. Noir, both of these I got for ten bucks on the deal. Uh, really been wanting to play Dead Rising 2 since it is co-op. I don't know who's playing it anymore, but love zombie games, so really looking forward to giving it a try. And the critically acclaimed L.A. Noir, I really was so close to putting this in the other day, but it ticked to October, and I was like, you know what? I want to get some survival horror action going on, but I will definitely play this too before the end of the year because. I hear nothing but great things about that as well. So that's it as far as pickups and discussions. I hope I didn't make this video too long. And I hope it's not too confusing seeing me in different clothes and settings and everything. And I hope the sound's working this time. Please be working sound. But uh, anyways, you know, I got some. I got a vacation coming up here in October. And during that vacation, I think we said it in the podcast. I'm not too sure, but if if, if I didn't... You know what, I won't ruin it yet, and if I did, you already know what's going to happen, but got something pretty cool going on in October. Uh, we'll probably do a video about it pretty soon when it gets in there, but I got a vacation, plan on beating a lot of games, because I'm going to have a lot of free time, and I can't wait to relax. So uh, until I can get that next video out, you guys, just hang tight with me, get through these couple weeks that are left in this uh, just crappy months for me of work. So just thanks for tuning in. I'm lagging again, and I'm lagging out.